I'm Paul and I'm a Muslim convert. I feel very at home in Wiltshire because I'm born and bred in the West Country, I'm educated locally and I'm a local tradesman. I'm a tree surgeon and I've always enjoyed having a life where work, family and the place, the landscape all blend into one. I can't get in my car and take a drive without seeing somewhere that I've worked and there'll be a memory attached to that. Maybe it's where my father and I started the business, one of those first few jobs where we didn't have the right tools. Or maybe it's somewhere where I was finishing late in the dark and my wife came out to help me. Into this well-adjusted life, into which you know I fit as well as I fit into a pair of old boots, has come Islam. It came in the form of a young man called Jihad, I hired him as a labourer. He was new in the country and he'd come from a more restrictive culture where he was not able to do a lot of things that ordinary British lads do. Things like go out and have a beer, sleep with a girl. And here he was in Britain and he could do these things without people thinking he was bad. He was excited by it. He was interested. He was asking a lot of questions. But he was also holding back. He wasn't going to do the things that he actually wanted to do because something was telling him not to. And I was interested because it was his faith that was holding him back. But he wasn't a particularly devout guy. If he'd been the kind of guy that, if you were uncharitable, you'd have called a god-botherer, I'd have thought, yeah, that's, that's what he's about. That's what he likes. But he was just an ordinary guy. And I think that was perhaps why I listened to him more. But I listened to him, I went to the mosque, I learned a little bit about Islam, and I became a Muslim. So life goes on much as before. I haven't got a flashing red sign above my head that says, watch out, this guy's a Muslim. And I haven't got a different name, I still keep my same name. There's a few subtle changes, and perhaps a slight feeling of being an outsider in your own backyard. I don't... I don't go to church on Easter Sunday. I can't take communion in church. My children haven't been christened. And I know my Christian wife would wish that was different, even though she's never actually complained about it. I don't know where I'll be buried. I always thought I'd be buried in an old churchyard underneath a yew tree that I used to prune. But that certainly isn't going to happen now. I think some of my, my oldest friends who are very wedded to British secular culture have just withdrawn a bit from me as well. But all in all, I still feel I belong. I remember one of my friends said to me, so what kind of Muslim have you become? Well, are you a Sunni Muslim or a Shia Muslim? I hadn't even thought about it. You've got just as many subdivisions in Islam. Never mind about worrying about dishonest people and honest people as you'll find all over the world. I've met a lot of people who are outsiders in British culture. And I can see the need to get these guys on the inside, to get them really proud to be British like we are. Because we don't want cultural apartheid. We don't want those prophecies of rivers of blood coming true. And we just don't want people wandering around the place miserable and hating us. So the only way that that's going to work is to engage with them, to accept them for who they are. Then they can accept you and you can go forth together as British. And yes, it's going to change you. It's going to change them. I'm not saying go and become a Muslim. I'm just saying that you will change slightly and so will they. British culture will change, but it will change through listening and understanding each other.